Hello. He is risen. Awesome. Great to see you this morning. Happy Easter. My name's Pastor Frank, and I am thrilled that you are here. We have uh, a little different kind of an Easter plan, but magnificent all the same. And so we thank you, quartet. We thank you, brass. We thank you, percussionist. Thank you, maestro. <laughs> it's going to be a great morning. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ has risen and i 
thank you. Now, we're going to have our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and there's a way we can do this. If you know this song, sing quietly. Next year, we're all going to sing and raise the rafters. <laughs> that will be a great thing. This year, if you know this song, sing quietly and let our quartet raise the roof. Easter day, hallelujah, hallelujah, for what God has done and what God is doing. We have uh, an extensive prayer list in your worship folder. If you'd keep these people in your prayers through the week, I had prayer with Diane Kibler first thing this morning. About six weeks ago, Diane said to me, I wonder if we'll make it to Easter. And she made it. And this will be her resurrection day, I think. So we love Diane. We love these people on our prayer list. We love you and your family. We love the fact that you turn to God for strength. For the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is your good shepherd. And God proves his love on Easter. So I'm going to uh, ask our online worshipers to pray with us as we bow our heads in prayer. And when we get to the Lord's Prayer, say it with us if you are inclined. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God, we wait we wait we 
we wait on your gentle calling. You call to us in every age. Children, teens, adults, and those who are rich in years. We hear the voices of children and they are the whispers of angels to us. On Easter, Lord, we don't know fully what to make of it. Because we sense your nearness, because dis, despite what has happened and the ways we have longed to do your will but sometimes fallen short, longed to be your disciples but sometimes not living the lesson. Sometimes longing to be strong for those near to us, near and dear to us, and sometimes we are weary in well-doing. We ask that you would make plain the path we are to walk and help us to know that you journey with us. And when our confidence is shaken and our path leads to places we never expected to travel, help us to know that you've been there first. You are taking the lead. You will help us never to be hopelessly lost because when we are lost, you come to find us. So thank you for Easter. Thank you for victory over death. Thank you for being our good shepherd. And we pray this prayer in the name of Christ who teaches us to say when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the good news from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and she said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bit down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then 
the disciples returned to their homes. The disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over her to But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb as she wept. Sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, 
one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him. Jesus said to her, Best laid plans. Sorry about that, Pastor Gene. We will figure out what was going on with that. Um, so, God is generous. Think about what God has done. Think about what God is doing. See, think about how God is seeing us through this year that has been unlike any other. Think about how God has been generous by the people God has brought, brings into our lives. We are richly blessed. So thank you for uh, making your offerings regularly. Thank you, uh, online community, for making contributions online and mailing checks to the church and thank you for giving us the ability to remain strong as a family of faith so will you pray with me as i bless this offering dear god we just thank you for the opportunity to share what we have to give as you would have us give to keep this outpost of faith strong. And so these are our gifts. We offer them to you without reservation. Take these gifts and multiply them. Use them for the building of the kingdom in this place and throughout the world. And then set us to the doing of your will. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen.
Thank you, Dominion Brass. That was beautiful. So speaking about our sound system, we, uh, I, and I really am apologetic to you if that was hard on your ears. But I'm really apologetic to our sound technician, Michael, because, believe it or not, he had that volume turned completely down. So we'll figure it out after the service. Just be thankful that my microphone isn't doing that right now. And the lesson is, sometimes we turn God's volume down all the way. Sometimes we turn, we make it a point to turn God's volume down. And during Holy Week, we turn the volume up on Palm Sunday, we turn the volume down on Monday, Thursday, and especially on Good Friday. You know, you know the way we are. And turn the volume back up on Easter. I wonder if God is asking you, is speaking to you in love, and wants you to turn his volume up. Is this, is this too much air? Anybody over here? I can feel this beautiful, fresh air blowing my way. I wonder if God is asking you to teach, to treat, treat his voice more seriously. Is there something you've known that God is longing for you to do, and you've known it for some time, and God's asking you to turn the volume up? This, this has been quite a year, and, and folks have been leaning on a particular psalm to get through, and I'm going to read part of it to you, because all the disciples, all of Jesus' disciples, knew this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The reason we turn the volume down in the middle of Holy Week is because we cannot imagine. It's hard enough for us to understand that there are seasons when we walk through the valley of the shadow. We know that's part of our life. But to think that God did it first. That's too much. That's too much. The beautiful Easter narrative from the Gospel of John that Pastor Amy and Pastor Jean read for us. Spend some time rereading that today. It is such a beautiful telling of the Easter day, the first Easter day, and how astonished the women were. John takes time to elaborate the story, but he doesn't capture everything. So in the Gospel of Mark, we read these words. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb and they entered there. And there was a young man dressed in a robe of all white. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is raised and he's going before you to the Galilee.
Think about those first disciples. They knew that their lives involved some walking through the valley of the shadow. But to think that God, to think that their Savior, to think that their teacher, Lord, had walked through the valley, that was too much. They were dispersed. They ran away. And in the Gospel of Mark, it says, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. Well, he's not here. He is raised. And he's going before you into the Galilee. He's going before you into the Galilee. Why the Galilee? That's my question this morning. It's very simple. Why the Galilee? The Galilee was forlorn. It was an out-of-the-way place. It's where Jesus came from, and it was about the only thing that they had going for the Galilee was that Jesus came from there. It was the outback of Judea. Jesus spent most of his time educating his disciples to get them ready to go up to Jerusalem where he was crucified, where he rose. And so it seems curious that at the time when Jesus, his first resurrection day, what did he choose to do? He, he chose to go back to the Galilee. Bishop Will Willimon paints the scene. One might have thought that on the first day of his resurrected life, the risen Christ might have gone straight to a palace, to the seat of Roman power, and maybe he would have appeared there. Imagine, Willimon continues, imagine... Jesus saying, Pilate, Pontius Pilate, you made a big mistake. One might have thought Jesus would do something effective. Would address the movers and the shakers. Would grasp the levers of power. But he didn't go to Herod, he didn't go to Caiaphas, he, he didn't go to Pontius Pilate. He went to the outback, he went to the Galilee. He went to a place where nobody special really lived. Except us Christ followers. The resurrected Christ goes goes back to, appears before, the very same ragtag group of people who disappointed him, misunderstood him, forsook him, and fled into the darkness. How did you do this? Particular holy week. How have you done this year? Have there been times where, when you also have walked through the valley of the shadow. Welcome to the human race. I'm not here to be hard on anybody. But we really, this year, need Easter. Now, it would have been news enough that Christ had died, but the good news is that he died for us. It would have been news enough that Christ rose from the dead, but the good news is he rose for us. You know, in the, in the Bible, nobody actually saw Jesus rise. They saw him afterwards. 
And they didn't appear to him. He appeared to them. He appeared to us. At, at New Albany Methodist, we have a couple of different types of worship. This is the classic service because it's classic. A lot of the familiar forms that Christians have come to be inspired by year after year. And at the 9.30 hour, we have our redemption service. It's, it's really uh, a seeker service. It, it has different forms, different format, and relates to people who perhaps for one reason or another, another have never really related to the classic forms of Christian worship. And both are good. Both are great. Different d- speaks to different groups of people. And... At both of our service, we build a bridge to reach out to people who are seeking for God to do something better in our lives. Take all of that and put it aside. Because we have faith in Easter, We have faith in God, not because we sought God first, but because God first sought us. We have faith in Easter. We have faith in God, not because we first sought God, but because God first sought us. So if this has been a year that has been unlike any other for you in the midst of this difficult time, in the midst of this suffering year, God seeks you. And God will not give up until He finds you. He is your shepherd. And you can depend on him if you walk through the valley of the shadow because he went there first. I started my day or a couple hours into the day, 7 o'clock, rolled around and I called Diane Kibler, one of our saints of the church. Diane about six weeks ago, said to me, Pastor Frank, do you think I'll make it till Easter? She's been very sick. Lady, wonderful lady. If you've come to our blood drive, she's the one at the desk. Doesn't seek a spotlight ever. Quiet kindness personified. Diane says, Pastor Frank, do you think I'll make it to Easter? Well, she made it. And I have a sense that this will be her resurrection day. And one time, she was a little trembly. I was sitting next to her bed. And she said, Pastor, show me what God looks like so I will know him when he comes. Oh, Diane, you know the story. He's the good shepherd. He's the one who leaves the 99 and he goes out and seeks the lost sheep until it is found. And then he puts it on his shoulders and carries it back. The good shepherd will come to find you. He will seek you. He will find you. And then he will lead you home. And so I prayed with Diane this morning. Her daughter, Kelly, put me on speakerphone, so I prayed with the two of them at 7 a.m. this morning. And I said, he is your good shepherd. 
forever. He is your forever good shepherd. You know, Good Friday, we thought, what with the blood and all, that this was the end. We thought it was over between us and God. At last, we had gone too far. We tortured the man to death. Yet on Easter, he came back. Back to the very ones who had forsaken Him. Have you ever forsaken your Lord and Savior during this difficult year? Is it possible? I know I have. Not proud to say it. On Easter, He came back to the very ones who had forsaken, betrayed, and crucified Him. And He came back. To the likes of us. And that should say everything to you about the love of God. A student one time summarized all the gospel in just a few words. In the Bible, it gets dark. And then it gets very, very dark. And then Jesus shows up. This year, it got dark. And then it got very, very dark. And then Easter shows up. Jesus came back. So, during these couple few months with Diane, I have felt like a parent standing with a child at the school bus stop. I remember waiting with my boys at the bus stop, their little hands wrapped around my two fingers. And you wait. And pretty soon, the bus shows up, and the doors swing open, and I've been waiting for, with Diane for the bus. And pretty soon, the bus will arrive, the doors will open, and guess who's driving the bus? the greatest bus driver ever. And so all of us are gathered there. We'll say, go along, Diane. Don't be afraid. We'll watch the bus roll down the street and take a turn out of sight to that place of learning and love and laughter. And we'll wave, all of us, but not to say goodbye. To say, we'll see you later. Oh, how we this year need Easter. And we got it. Because he came back. Will you pray with me? Oh dear God, you give to us Easter. You give to us our heart's desire. You help us understand what to look for and what to long for. And you give to us yourself 
and you call us to be together in faith. Not because we came seeking you, but because you sought us. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Amen. to our health protocol we will after the benediction we will leave from starting in the back and moving to the front and uh, we will exit out the door on the right hand side so thank you thank you thank you pastor jean uh, my little sister's here jill ways to jill her husband ron's here her son brian his wife karen so now you can say nice things around them lest you embarrass yourselves. <laughs> uh, one time I was uh, playing high school football and my family went to the game and the people in front of them kept ye yelling my number 
and telling the coach, get that bum off the field. <laughs> uh, I wasn't, wasn't having a good game. Um, we came from a loving home. Many of our best memories and some challenging ones too have been in church, the church family. I remember the first, we've got a great nursery here, by the way. Just want to, I just want to call, qualify what I'm going to say. Great, terrific nursery. We're getting, you know, we'll get it back in gear soon. But the first time I was left in a church nursery, I was terrified. I hadn't been around a lot of other kids, and my mom took me into this loving place with loving nursery attendants and a few other little kids that scared me to death. And I wailed for a long time. And eventually they went and got my mom and she came back. Because I was afraid that I was left and someone that I loved wouldn't. We never have to worry, ever, ever, ever. You cannot do anything that puts you so far removed from the love of God. God seeks us. God loves you first. You cannot goof up so boldly and radically to put yourself on God's bad list. No matter what this year has been, God comes seeking and finding and will take you by the hand until he leads you home. Oh, how we need Easter. Because in Easter, God comes back. Go in peace. Go in love. Amen. Amen.